Um, so like I said earlier to you guys, uh, we are live streaming this up on YouTube right now uh, for the first time. So I do apologize if there's any um, random things that occur pop up um, while we're doing this. Um, just a little bit about uh, what we do and who we are. Um, so we're coding boot camp. Uh, we have uh, a single Python class. It's a 10 week full time course. Uh, it's Monday through Friday, 930 to about 334 o'clock. Um, and throughout the 10 weeks, you know, we build about 10 to 12 projects, uh, go through a lot of the programming concepts that require you to be a junior level to intermediate level developer. Uh, basically, you know, you can come in with no experience or experience in other languages or even just experience in Python uh, and, you know, come out being able to build full fledged uh, applications with Python. Right. Uh, what we tend to build is we use the Flask micro framework, uh, which allows us to build web applications in Python. So over the course of the 10 weeks, uh, you learn five different languages, uh, three different frameworks. And if you guys want, there's pizza. All right. So. Uh, thank you for coming to the event. Uh, like I said earlier, the bathrooms are behind me, these two doors. Uh, we have pizza in the kitchen. Feel free to get up at any time. Um, and then also drinks in the fridge, you know, help yourself, and snacks by the elevator, also help yourself, right? Um, so today, what we're pretty much going to be going over is just introductory Python. I'm going to be going over some basic level concepts, uh, data types, variables, loops, functions, um, well, actually, we have time for functions, right? Uh, and then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little game, okay? A little guessing game where we'll have the computer generate a random number and we'll actually uh, try to guess it, right? And it'll let us know if it's higher or lower within a certain range or at a certain value point. If you guys do have any questions, um, one of our former students actually back there, her name is Sasha. Just raise your hand if you have trouble uh, getting something to work. And she'll just come right over and help you guys. If you have any questions pertaining to the course itself, um, feel free to ask me. Just uh, ask me afterwards. Just hold the questions until after. Okay. Um, I'm sure most of you have already met Kirsten, right? And then we also have um, the guy back there in that room. His name is Reeple. So the three of us will be here uh, after and also during the break in the event. Um, so if you do have any questions, please just hold them until then. So what we're going to do, the first thing, is uh, we just need to open up PyCharm to begin with, right? So go ahead and open up. It's called JetBrains PyCharm. Um, I just call it PyCharm. All right, so open that up. And it should pop up at some point. There we go. Might take a little long. Okay. Again, if you're on Anaconda um, or using Jupyter Notebook, uh, the code is the exact same, right? Uh, so that's perfectly fine. You can follow along with the same code. Um, if oh. okay, so if you're using PyCharm, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project, right? If you're using Jupyter Notebook, just create a new file. Okay, so open up Jupyter Notebook, launch it, and then go to new file. New uh, it should be Python three. Okay, if you need a little bit of help opening that, feel free to raise your hand. All right, so for those of us that are on PyCharm, uh, we're going to create a project, new project, and we're going to call this workshop. All right, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Feel free to save it to anywhere you guys would like to. And just hit create. All right, so it's going to set up some things for us, basically. Um, Python is a language where uh, it needs an interpreter to run, right? Um, essentially, that's what it's creating for us. That's what this little creating virtual environment box is doing, is it's just downloading uh, the interpreter in order for us to run this code, which could take a, a couple minutes. Well, a couple seconds. It's not that bad. All right. So once it's booted up, if it's not booted up just yet, I'll give you guys a um, about a minute um, to let that uh, catch up here. Well, what we want to do is we want to right click on this workshop folder up here. This is basically our project folder that we're starting with. We're going to right click it and we're going to go to new and click on Python file. Okay. Again, if you're in Jupyter Notebook, 
All you need to do is create a new file and you're good to go and just follow along in the code. All right, the name that we're gonna give this is lesson underscore 01. And click okay to create it. All right, I enlarged uh, my, my screen, the text within it, as much as uh, I, I could. I can go more. If you guys do have trouble seeing it back there, just let me know, okay? All right, so one of the first things that I always like doing uh, is comments, okay? Usually what makes a difference between a good developer and a great developer is good commenting, right? So in Python, in order to comment something, we actually use the hashtag or... If you're old enough, the pound sign, right? I'm used to both. So we're going to be writing a lot of comments throughout this, uh, basically to just block off the sections that I go over each time here. If you're on Jupyter Notebook, you can actually just create a new cell, okay, for each different section. And that's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to put here, uh, use hashtag to comment in Python, right? And this might just yell at me a little bit. One thing about PyCharm is um, it catches errors all the time, even if you know that there's not an error. Right? It's a little annoying sometimes, but it's okay. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go over is data types. Right? So I'm going to just mark off a giant section, put a bunch of hashtags here, and put a header of data types. Right, just that way, if you're scrolling through, um, generally you can easily see that this is a brand new section over here, okay? So the first data type that we're gonna talk about is integers. So I'm gonna put a little comment here saying integers, a colon, and integers are whole numbers. Okay. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. All right, any whole number you can think of, that is basically an integer. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna print one out right now, right? So this print with it with the parentheses, okay, is called a function. Now we might have time to get into functions, we might not, but this is a built-in function that Python has that basically just outputs the code that we put inside of these parentheses here, okay? So if I wanna just output an integer, all I'm gonna put is any single number. So I'm just gonna put three, all right? And when we wanna run this code, in Jupyter Notebook, there's a little, um, there should be a little button at the top that says run uh, or like an electric or a lightning bolt or something. Uh, for us on PyCharm, we're gonna go up to run up here. Okay, up in the toolbar, click on run, and you should get this little box pop up. Okay, then we're gonna click on the little arrow on the right of lesson 01, and you should have a terminal pop up on the bottom. Okay, our terminal is basically what's gonna interpret and output the code for us right here. All right, so don't worry about um, the location. This is basically what's being run, so this is the file and the location of the file. Uh, over here it lets us know that the process finished with exit code zero, which means that everything worked out well, right? If it finished with exit code one, that would mean that there was an error somewhere. But we can see that we actually, we did print out the number three here, right? So we could keep going on with printing out whole numbers, but these ones are pretty basic to get. So any whole number is an integer. The next data type that we're gonna deal with is a float. Okay, and these are decimal point numbers, right? So anything ending in a decimal point, 3.2, 4.1, 6.9, right? So on and so forth. And we're just going to print, I'll say 5.6 here, okay? And in order to run the code uh, now, we actually, we don't have to go up to run. You can go just to the right over here and hit this green run button. Okay, and so when we run that, we actually see that it prints out, it still prints out the three because we're still running that statement, right? And then it prints out 5.6, which is our float variable. 
or rather data type. Okay, one thing you might notice um, if you're not used to comments or if you haven't seen commenting before is that it's not printing anything out, right? The only things that are printing out are what we put inside of the parentheses within the print statement that we have going on here. And then also any comments there are, basically when it gets read, when the file gets read, it actually completely ignores anything in a comment, okay? So the next uh, data type that we're gonna go over is Booleans. Okay, and what Booleans are, I always like to think of them as switches. Right, there are either true or false values. Basically, think of a light switch, right? You either have it on or off. And that's essentially what a Boolean variable is, or Boolean data type is, okay? It allows us to kind of track whether something has occurred or not. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna print both Booleans here. I'm gonna print true, and then on the next line, I'm gonna print false. And we're just going to run that. Okay, so we can see that it did print out those two values as well. All right now, if we don't want them to be printing out, all we have to do is comment out any one of these print statements. So I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that for just about every one of them. Now, I wanna show you guys a shortcut here though. Rather than going to each line and putting a hashtag right at the beginning, right? Um, a look, nice little shortcut is if you press on Windows, it's control forward slash, which is where the question mark is. On Mac, it's command forward slash. If you just click on that line and press control forward slash, it'll automatically comment it out. Now, the reason why that's nice is what you can do with that is you can highlight both of these print statements and press control forward slash and it'll comment both of them out. So it's a nice little time saver um, if you ever need to do that, right? A lot of times when you're working with um, any code, really, you know, there's certain sections that you just need to comment, comment out completely. You know, you don't want to delete them, but you also don't want them to run. So you just highlight them and you comment them out. So there's a nice little shortcut that we can use. So I'm just going to start uh, commenting out each print statement as we, or right after we run it here. Okay, the one after that is called a string. And these are essentially one or more characters. Okay, what I mean by a character is um, pretty much it also has to be within a single. So let me just say within single or double quotes here. Okay, what I mean by one or more characters is it doesn't matter if it's a one, uh, a number, a symbol, or an alphabetical character, right? As long as it is inside of two quotes, it's read in as a string value, okay? So if we go ahead and we print, and I'm gonna do both single quotes and double quotes, right? So if we put down single quotes and I say, this is a string, okay, and we run that, right, it's going to print out a nice sentence here saying this is a string. We can also do the same thing with double quotes. So I can say print and then put double quotes and say this is also a string. Right, it still prints out both of them the exact same way, okay? One thing to keep in mind here is the use of single or double quotes though, okay? You can't mix them up. You either have to begin and end with single or begin and end with double, right? The nice thing is that we can actually use the opposite of whatever we used on the outsides 